This is a simple example of using repeat loops in Unity. I'm going to show while loop as well as for. Um, and I'm just going to be using um, the inspector for input and the console for output. So it'll be pretty basic. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and make a new C sharp script. I'll just call it loop demo. And I'm going to make a empty game object up here. I'm just going to call it script. And I will drag my script to the object so it'll run. OK, so the whole point of repeat loops are to have it so that the computer will do things for you so you don't have to keep doing them yourself. So first, let's look at a while loop. I'm going to go ahead and go into the C Sharp script. But I guess before I, I start coding here, let's take a, a step back to look and see what a, makes up a while loop. Um, I do have a separate YouTube video on um, that if you'd like to watch how it uh, traces through. Um, but I just want to show the main parts. The main parts are we need um, some sort of a variable or condition where the while will be true for a while and eventually it won't be. So otherwise we don't want the loop to run forever. So in this case, I'm setting up an integer. I called it i, which is a very common um, letter to use for this. And I'm setting it to 1. Now my condition is going to be checked inside the while to see if this is true. And if it is, it'll run. If it won't, it'll just skip past the curly braces. The, anything you put inside the curly braces will run if that condition is true. And something really important to include is this increment statement or something to make sure that this eventually is no longer true. So in my example, I'm using numbers. There are some times when you'd use a while um, loop to um, do something while, let's say, um, game over equals false, you know, while it's while the game is still playing and once the game's over, it'll stop. Um, but in this case, I'm using numbers, so I'm putting in an increment statement. Once again, if you'd like to look at the, the tracing of this, I have a separate video that just goes through that pretty quickly. I'll put the link in the, in the video. So let's go over into Visual Studio and we'll set up a basic while loop. I'm going to go ahead and put my thing inside of start. I'm not going to be using update at all for this example. So first part is I want to set up some sort of accounting variable that will control this. So I'm going to go ahead and type int, which will be integer i. And in this case, I'm just going to have the starting number be 1. Then I go ahead and type the word while. And in the parentheses, I put what condition I'd like to check. So I'm going to do while i is less than or equal to 5, just to start. Now, the spacing here and here doesn't actually matter. They could be right next to each other. Depends on how you like to see it. And the curly braces are what's going to happen for my loop. So I could do something really basic. Let's do, I could debug log hello. And I want to make sure that I add um, to increment my uh, counting variable. Otherwise, this would be an infinite loop. So one way you can do that is you can say um, i equals i plus 1. So that means it's taking whatever the value of i is, it adds 1, and as usual, it always takes everything from the right and puts it into the left. Another way that this sometimes is written, you could say i plus plus. If you're just adding 1, that's another way that you could increment a, a variable. I'm just going to do it this long way. So let's see how this works. So at this point, it should just start with 1, go through this really five times, and write hello. I'm going to save this. So let's jump over into Unity and hit play, and I can look at my console. I've got hello five times. Also, I just want to point out, I think I've mentioned that in other videos, the default um, console usually looks like this, right? It's a little harder to keep track of. So there's a couple of things you can do just to keep track of things if you're trying things in the, in the console. If you don't want the timestamp, you can hide that. And then also, I can change the log entry just to one line, and it'll just list out what I'm looking for. So for this example, it seems to work a little better. All right, so I've got my 
my loop of hello. So what it's doing is it starts with one, it goes in, is one less than or equal to five, it is, so it writes hello, adds one to, five, to I, and it checks it again. And it does it that many times until it is no longer true and it'll exit. So what I can do is if I wanted something to happen after it, I could goodbye. If you look at this, what's going to happen is it'll say hello five times, and when it's done, it'll then say goodbye. So things outside of the curly braces will not be looped. It'll just happen just like a normal program would. This will happen one time. So to prove that, I'm just going to go over to Unity, hit play again. Now it says hello five times and goodbye once. So what if I would like to be able to change how many times this would run instead of having this hard-coded five? What I can do is add a, a number to the inspector and I can change it from there. So what I'm going to be doing is adding a public int. How about I'll call it user number? And I'll set the initial value to three. Then instead of letting that hard-coded five, let's change this to user number. So what it'll do is start with one, and as long as one is less than that user number, it will do what's inside the loop. It'll continue to add one to i, so at some point it will be larger than the three, and then it'll say goodbye. So let's see if that runs. And there we have three hellos and a goodbye. Let's look at the script. If I go over here, now user number's in the inspector. Let's change that to 10. And if I hit play, now I have 10 hellos and a goodbye. If I change that to one, I have one hello and goodbye. So by changing that, I can change how many times it loops. Now let's look at what, how a for loop would work. A for loop has a few things built in, so you don't have to set a counting variable separate and increment separate. It's all part of the statement and required. Um, I also have a whole video on tracing a for loop if you'd like more detail on how that runs. But with the for loop, we have the word for, and then inside the parentheses, we have three items. The first is setting the counting variable and setting the starting value. If I hadn't declared I yet, I need to um, set it to be an integer here. If it already exists, I can just use i. In this case, I'm setting it to 1. The middle is the condition that I'm checking for the loop to run. So as long as that's true, the loop will run. That third part is incrementing the counting variable. So in this case, it would add 1 to i. And anything you want to repeat, you put inside the, the curly braces. As a reminder of how this works, in general, what it's going to do is it, the very first time only, it sets the value of i. It checks to see if this condition is true. And in this case, i is less than or equal to 5. And if it's true, it does what's inside the curly braces. After that, it adds 1 to i. Then it checks again. Is this true? Now 2 is still less than or equal to 5. And it'll do what's inside there. So it just keeps looping through this cycle and continues on. So in Unity, let's go ahead and make a simple for loop. So I've got four, I'm setting i equal to one. I'm using i is less than or equal to five as a similar setup. And I will increment it by one. Notice each thing is separated by a semicolon. And I'll have it say hello. So if I run this, it should write hello five times. It'll set i to one. It'll check if this is true. It'll do what's inside here. And then it'll add one to i. I'm just going to change the spacing here just a little bit. Let's save that and check it out. OK, 
Okay, so we've got hello printed five times. So the output looks basically the same as a while loop. So sometimes you can kind of pick which one you'd prefer to use. If we want to change how many times it runs, pretty much we just need to change the condition. So in some cases, you just need to change this particular number. So if I wanted to do something like I did with the while loop, I can set up a public user number again. And how about this one? I'll set to seven as the initial. And here I would just change that. Also, if I want to print, instead of hello, if I want to print the number it's on, I can, let's say, debug log i. So this would count the number up to whatever number I, I enter. Let's try that. I'm going to save it and hit play. So now it counts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I can change this user number here because I made the integer public. Let's say I want it to be 4. Now it only counts to 4. So with either of these, a for loop or a while loop, in some cases it just depends on which one you prefer to use. Um, in other cases, a for loop generally works with things that are counting with numbers, while a while loop could also check things to see if a game is over or you could check a Boolean value to see if a condition is true or not. Like I mentioned, if you are interested in seeing more detail on tracing a for or while loop, I do have two other videos that go through the exact steps of how the um, computer processes it. I'll put the links of those in the video description.